Okay, so it's pretty clear that after my last total drama video, people seem to question and be a little upset of me putting Mike and Zoe of all characters in the D tier. And all I can say to that is... You'll bet your sweet bippy I did! Now, I know I'm not getting comments of people saying that they're unsubscribing or that they hate me or anything of the sort. No, I just thought it would be fun explaining why I did it and why I stand by that choice in the first place. Me not liking Mike and Zoe isn't really a secret as well. Hell, I even did even suggest making this type of video over a year ago. So the idea isn't anything new, but my reasons for such actions will be. Now, the biggest thing I'll say before I start this is, I'm sorry, Ricky. You know, I'll still respect your stance, though. So, why did I do it? Why did I say something so brave yet controversial? Well, again, it all stems from the fact that I don't really enjoy Mike and Zoe as characters. I don't downright hate them, because if that was the case, I would have just shoved them into the E tier or the F tier. You know, the tiers with Dave and... Stacy, but I didn't. So, why do they still belong in the D tier to me? That is because, as characters and who they are, nearly everything about them could have been so much better, but was it? I know you can say that for a lot of characters, but seeing that these two play important roles within the two seasons that they are in, it's fair to judge what they do within that amount of screen time. The first thing I can bring up is that they literally cannot exist without the other, as in you really can't talk or even think about Mike or Zoe without the other. Why is that a problem you may think? Well, it's because, let's be real here, Zoe out of the two just isn't a character by herself without Mike. She's essentially nothing. Seriously, go look at Revenge and tell me how many times and how many scenes there are of Zoe and she brings up Mike to some extent, because there's plenty of them. I mean, they did try and make her her own thing, but they threw that away after a few episodes and then she reverted back to her old self, making it seem that she got no progress essentially. Mike is a little bit lucky due to his personalities that makes him, you know, something worth watching. But again, it just still connects back to Zoe on him not wanting her to find out about the personalities. So he just spends most of his time just being worried about anything to do with Zoe. Like, they really tried so hard for these two to be a couple within the season, so much so that their first scenes are of them staring into each other's eyes. That's a lot of first sight cliché, which are not usually all that great and are usually boring. And it makes you think, oh, oh gee, I wonder if they're gonna get together. Well, yeah, they are, and nothing else comes from that. Not all Love at First Sight's moments are terrible, but these two being together gives off more force than a Star Wars movie. Now, some of you might think, um, but didn't you say that in your tier list video that you would put most of the R&R &R cast together? What makes them so much better? Because they're depending on one another. Well, one, that was the whole point of the season. Everyone in this case had someone to always work off of. Two, the ones that did make it further within the season did get character development to stand out on their own without their partner. The regular seasons did this in the opposite way of introducing characters and what they were known for first, and then they had some sort of partner. Take this for example, Duncan and Courtney. Yes, they are known as a couple, a strong and popular one. But you know that both of them can stand out on their own for who they are. Duncan, a bad boy, and then Courtney, a goody-goody. I can take it a step further by showing another couple within the Revenge cast itself, that being Sam and Dakota. First they were introduced for who they were, Sam, a gamer, Dakota, fame-hungry. Both of them, fine on their own. Now you put them together, it's great, but once more with Mike and Zoe, they can't really do that, and if you try to, there's only so much you can talk about without bringing up one or the other. Mike at least has his personalities, and Zoe's, well, just eye candy, let's be real. Now, them being forced together 24-7 isn't my problem. Them being on screen most of the time, and what they do with it, kind of is my problem. Now, it's not too bad in Revenge, I'll be honest, it's spread out throughout the episodes, it's fine there. But boy howdy, I would be lying saying that there wasn't anything wrong in All-Stars. These two pretty much are the absolute 
focus of the season, and nothing else really matters. Yeah, there are a few side plots here and there for others, but it still ends up being connected to Mike and Zoe eventually. Everybody deals with these two, with the exception of Lindsay, really. So, lucky her, I guess. From this season, in the amount of time that they take up, it's pretty much the same thing of Zoe shouting for Mike's help just as much as before, and then somehow being dumber in some cases than Lindsay. Like, how and why, Zoe? Like, I understand that she didn't interact with many people in her life beforehand, but she pretty much only interacted with Mike in and outside of the season for a full year, and she couldn't tell that it was Malin control most of the time? Oh, that can't be good. Hi, do you feel that? The malevolent one, he's coming! <laughs> Which brings me to my next point, just everything about Mal. You know, I honestly wouldn't have as much as a problem I do with him if he was his own absolute character, but he's not. He's completely connected to Mike, that being the last and hidden personality. Just everything about him really makes it out to be ripped out of some lame fanfiction that has a heart on for Mike. How he was executed was terribly done, and it boggles my mind that villains up to this point have been good to amazing. We have this, and this, and this, and even this, but they completely missed the ball on this. Mal himself just does not work as a villain. They tried way too hard to make him threatening and evil. There's no real character besides him being evil for the sake of being a villain for the season and nothing more. I know, I know. Why am I talking about Mao when this is a video focused on Mike and Zoe? Well, it's kind of ironic that I said that everyone in this season ends up being connected to Mike and Zoe eventually, and Mao tries to be his own thing, yet he ends up literally being connected to Mike the most. And the ending for these two doesn't help, mostly for Mike's case. You seriously cannot tell me that something is mind-numbingly stupid as Mike beating Mal in his own mind and locking him away in his subconscious, fusing all of the other personalities into himself, gaining all of their skills of the sort, which takes away the only interesting part about him. He ends up being one of the finalists for the season, technically winning the season. That just strengthens the fanfic point I just made. I know most would not want me to talk about All-Stars, but this season is a core part of their character, unfortunately. Could you imagine if Ricky releases that Courtney video, and when he analyzes her, he skips over World Tour entirely? Yeah, that's a controversial season for her, but it's still a core part of her character and everything to do with her. The same thing goes for these two. After all that, that's why I put them in the D tier might think that I do hate them, but again, I don't. The D tier was mostly made for characters that I don't care as much, and I don't care much about Mike and Zoe. Funny how I'm saying that while making this video, but you get what I'm saying. I find them to be overrated and not all that special as people make them out to be. I just don't see it, and then when people say like, oh, they're, they're just amazing characters. I don't see that aspect. Please tell me where you see the amazing part, because I certainly do not. But looking back on the list, there is one other person that has been getting questioned on their placement just as much as Mike and Zoe. And you know what? I do feel that I should change it as well. Perfect. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know what to do with all the links that I provide at the sort. Uh, have a great day, have a great night, and everything else you know what to do. Bye.